Here are 10 Excel tricks that I think everybody should know and the quickest and easiest way to get most operations done in Excel. Um, these are good if you have experience in Excel or if you don't have experience in Excel, they'll help you learn uh, a few ways to get things done faster. So the first thing that I didn't even know for the first three or four years that I was using Excel and it's really simple, but uh, it really saves a lot of time, especially if you have a 10 finger keyboard. Um, instead of hitting the equal sign to start a, a formula, um, you can actually hit the plus sign to start a formula. And I know that this doesn't seem like much, but with a 10 finger keyboard, you can just reach over and push plus instead of finding equals. And it does the exact same thing. Very quick very much easier to do. Um, another thing that a lot of Excel newbies don't know is that uh, it's a lot faster to use just the keyboard to navigate Excel. And the way you do a lot of this is through the arrow keys, using the up arrow now, the down arrow, the right, the left. You can use hold shift and the arrow keys to select a lot of things if you wanted to do something like bold them with control B. If you didn't want to hold shift and go all the way up like this, you can hit control shift and it takes you to the top or, or the end of either the column or the row that is populated. So if you go way out here and you have something and even if you don't have anything in between, you can hit control shift and it'll take you all the way out to that one, in which case you could apply a formatting or you could uh, best fit the cells or you could do something similar to like that. So tip number three, tip number three is how to navigate with the keyboard even further. So we know control shift, we know the arrow keys, we know the plus sign. Now, how do you get up there to that ribbon to do a lot of the other uh, functions or formatting that you might need done? Well, you just hit alt. So when you see when I hit alt, all of these letters pop up. And so if I wanna to go to the home tab, I just hit H. Right, and so now if I want to um, make this cell a certain color, if I want to make it green, I hit H again because that's where the color is. It's Alt H H. Then I can just use the arrow keys to navigate up, make it green, and hit Enter. I did all of that without touching the mouse. Once you begin to memorize what these functions are, it becomes really, really easy and really fast to navigate Excel. So the next thing that's really big and really easy to use is the select all. Now you can just select all the cells right up here in the top left. Um, not, not widely known thing to do and it's really beneficial if you wanna apply any sort of formatting or anything like that to all the cells at the same time. The next thing um, that's really beneficial as far as modeling is concerned is using assumptions instead of hard codes. So you wouldn't wanna do plus the sum of one and two because that gives you three. What you'd wanna do is the, the sum of two different cells. That way, those cells are dynamic and you can change it and get a different result without having to go in and modify your formula. Um, the next thing is whenever you wanna do uh, a, locked, a locked cell. So what you'd wanna do is go over here to assumptions one and add it to assumption, or the a, cell A8. That gives you six. Um, you can still go in and change the cell five and you get different results and which is, which is great. Um, but what happens if you want to drag this down and still only multiply or add, add from this assumption cell right here? Well, if you drag it down, you're going to get different results and it's not going to be adding in because you're pulling this cell down. And, um, what you'd want to do to uh, make sure it stayed multiplying by this five right here is lock this one. And you lock this one by coming and clicking on it and hitting F4 and putting the dollar signs on it. So now, whenever we drag it down, it's still going to be adding that five in there. Um, you, can, you can go in and modify what is locked. So if the dollar sign is in front of the row number, the row is locked. If the dollar sign is in front of the column letter, then the column is locked. But you can modify these and only lock the row. So... If you did this and drag it down, uh, it would still only be times this cell D8. But if you moved it over to the right or to the left and changed the column, then once again, you would 
you would change that where that cell is located only on the columns and not on the rows. So the next thing that um, a lot of people uh, struggle with and don't know is you can actually insert multiple rows at one time. So if you highlight three rows, you'll actually insert three rows. Um, you, can, you can do this with the hotkeys by selecting a row and hitting Alt, H, I, R, which is a really handy shortcut instead of, instead of having to use the mouse and fumble around clicking over here and then coming over here and clicking insert. Um, it's just a lot easier to, to use the keyboard to do all of that and selecting multiple at the same time and you can delete them all at the same time too. Okay, so the next thing that's really confusing to a lot of people, but super powerful is the VLOOKUP. And a lot of people uh, say the index match is also uh, something that's just as powerful as the VLOOKUP, but I think the VLOOKUP is a little easier to digest, especially initially. So let's see what this is. So let's put a bunch of letters here and then let's coincide those with a bunch of numbers. So five, four, three, two, and one. And so that's our table right there. And so what we want to do is we want to say uh, VLOOKUP and we want to look, have a lookup value. So our lookup value is going to be this box right here. And let's, let's leave that empty for right now. Um, then we're going to have the table array and we're going to select the entire table that we have. And then we're going to have a column index number. And let's make that an assumption as well, just like I mentioned earlier. Uh, that box is blank. And then we can just close the parentheses. So of course, that's going to be completely null and void. Um, but what we want to do is we want to look up a certain value and then pull up the number that is associated with that value. So let's see, our lookup value is C. And our column index number is two. We only have two columns. So we have column one, column two. If we had three or four columns, this is even more beneficial to use an assumption. So it's column two. So what value is associated with C? It's six. You can see that pulled up right here. And so this is good because what if you want to add um, three plus A, right? So you would do plus the sum of this and whoops and this and so that's three and nine and then we change this to a and so three plus a is eleven as you can see right here so that's really beneficial but what if you have another set of numbers right over here and it's uh, five two four whatever you want to do it's random numbers right well, if we would want to do A in column three, then we would just change this assumption from three and see we got a reference error. And the reason is because there is no column three. What we have to do is we have to expand this table out to include column three. And there we go. A column three is five. Five plus three is eight. That's easy. That's all it is. That's how it works. So the next thing is... Uh, and it's really beneficial is, is adding and subtracting dates. So uh, what you can do is if you want to see how many days there are between a certain set of days, um, dates, then uh, you can just put those two dates in there and subtract in or add them. So if we want to say 1, 1, 2015, and we want to say 1, 1, 2014, and we want to see how many days that is, we could say this one minus this one and then format it like that. If you don't format it with the, the comma style, well, then you're not gonna be able to see that it'll give you, you'll just spit out another date is what it'll do. And the reason this is, is because if you, could, if you type one or something like that, and then you format that as a date, you can see the beginning, where Excel counts the beginning, January 1st, 1900, that's where it, that's where Excel starts. That's that's uh, that's point zero in Excel. And so three, you know, the number three sixty five is one one nineteen oh one, and the number seven thirty is one one nineteen oh two. So then you just add those up as we go, and that allows you to add and subtract dates. It can be a very handy feature in Excel. 
So lastly, um, and something that's misunderstood, but a, a very powerful tool in Excel is the if statement. So if you, if you use an if statement, it basically gives you a Boolean function. So it allows you to say whether something's true or false, and then based upon whether it's true or false, have it calculate one thing or another. So we want to say if five, if this one, if cell L12 is greater than cell L11, then one. If it's not, then zero. And so in this case, it gives you a very binary function. And you can say one, and then you could then go on even further to say if cell P12 equals one, then, then something else. And if not, then something else. Uh, it's a really, really simple function that is just basic logic. But I think a lot of people are just not really comfortable in its uses. Um, you, you can also embed if statements in if statements. So you could say if L12 is greater than L11, which in this case it is. So then it would default to the value of true, in which case you could put another if statement in there and say, and if L11 is greater than L10, then give that a value of true, one. Otherwise, value of false is zero. And in both cases, it's zero. So you can see that the first one was true. L12 is greater than L11. But L11 is not greater than L10. So it pushes a zero here. And this zero here pushes the zero to the, the before if statement. And so our end result is a zero. Um, you can do this as many times as you need to or as deep as your logic will let you go. Um, it can really make a powerful, um, easy to use function in Excel that can, that can populate and, uh, and help you do a lot of really in-depth analysis and uh, especially different scenario analyses. So that's it. Those are 10 really easy, simple to understand Excel tricks, Excel tips that I think anybody that's trying to become more efficient in Excel should know. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, comment if you have any questions, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.